Good evening and welcome to another episode of Contemporary Living with Farming Hill. I am one of your co-hosts, Andre Hill. And of course, today we got a good topic we're going to be talking about. So we're going to be talking about preparing your Airbnb during the coronavirus lockdown. So many of you, I have talked to people that was um, that's getting ready to start an Airbnb. And they was kind of hesitant considering the, our current circumstances. Of course, many of you know that the country is on lockdown due to the coronavirus to about April 7th. Um, hopefully it doesn't last longer than that there, but during this particular downtime, it is important for you to continue to be productive because this is, this is going to pass. And when it passes, you want to make sure that you're in position to go out and to continue to make a living for you and your family. So for those that, um, are thinking about starting an Airbnb or have started an Airbnb, I think this is going to be a good series for you. It's probably going to be a six to seven part series. Um, and hopefully I can impart to you a lot of helpful information that my wife and I have used um, over the last six months doing the Airbnb. So as we look into it, as we go right into our slides here, what is Airbnb? So pretty much Airbnb is a shared economy where you can rent out your house, you can rent out a bedroom, you can also rent out a camp, uh, if you got land like all on a river or if you got land in your backyard, you can rent that out as well. If you have a camper, you can also rent that out to, um, to Airbnb guests for a small fee or whatever you decide you want to rent it out for. Um, you can rent it out for $50 a night. You can rent out your house for $100 a night. The thing about it is you have options. So during this particular time, Airbnb, um, a lot of people has been hesitant because hotels are closing down, but some Airbnbs have remained open. Um, recently, I, I, me and my wife, we do Airbnb. We did have some people cancel, but Airbnb gave us an option. We can give them all of their money back or we can give them half their money back. Uh, considering the current issues with the coronavirus, um, me and my wife, we know we pretty much don't depend on Airbnb to pay our monthly mortgage. And I know some people out there that do. Uh, we gave our guests, you know, um, the, uh, a full refund. We gave our guests a full refund, and we also gave them the option if they decide in the future to come to the Chicago area and book with us, we give them a discount on their room as well, you know, so that we can retain those customers. I did customer service in retail for over 12 years, so I'm all about uh, keeping customers, keeping people coming back, and yet alone providing an experience for them when they come to the Chicago area. So remember, Airbnb is a shared living uh, it's shared living, um, kind of like when you're looking at your Ubers or you're looking at your Turo. These are what they call shared economies where people are taking their properties and they're renting it out to people at a low rate. So um, the shared economy is a, a great thing. You can make a lot of money um, with the shared economy, and it's a lot of great benefits as far as um, renting out your house to Airbnb. Now, with that being said, if you are a person that is concerned about the coronavirus or you feel that you're a person that, that has started Airbnb and your bookings are perhaps slow, there are other avenues you can market your Airbnb, uh, your property on as well. So one of the areas, one of the sites you can go to, you can also list your property on VRBO. They're like Airbnb as well. So if you're um, having problems booking through Airbnb or you think your property is not getting enough exposure, VRBO is the place to go. All right, the next one you have is Home Away. Home Away, um, you can use Home Away as well to book your properties, well, to advertise your properties, and people can go to Home Away and book your property on Home Away as well. And last but not least, um, another one is Booking.com. Um, you can um, put your listing on Booking.com to get bookings as well. So now you have Airbnb you can use, you can use VRBO, you can use Home, home Away and Booking.com. And actually you can all, you can use them all at one time. The thing about it is you want to make sure that you um, go to your calendars when, when you're booking just to make sure that you're not um, double booking your listings because you hate that, you hate to have two people show up at your house on a Friday night. I would hate to see that site as well because somebody's going to be very pissed off. <laughs> but so remember that there. And also you got to find out um, each company, what percentage of the commission that they want. I know Booking.com, I think I researched them. I haven't used them yet. I think their uh, commission, they want about 20% of what you make. Me personally, I think that's too much. I like Airbnb because Airbnb, you only pay about 3%. All right. So just remember that there. And one thing that you may do may have to do if you're not getting enough bookings or once you decide to list your properties, consider in today's current environment, you probably want to make sure that you um, lower your rates until, until everything picks back up, until everything's back moving with people back at work, back on the job. So like I said, I hope this will pass soon uh, because I'm ready to start my summer. 
Um, my wife and I, we got a camper we want to try out. We got a um, boat that fell in, in our hands. So we're looking for a great summer, but right now we know everything's on hold. So moving on. So as we as I, as I get ready to prepare you to start your Airbnb, I like to call this Airbnb ready. Let's talk about the preparation. So let's first of all, one of the first things you want to do if you're thinking about starting an Airbnb is research. Research is very, very important. So you want to research Airbnb. You want to make sure this is something that you want to do. And if, and I can tell you now, this business can be very lucrative. You can make a lot of money doing Airbnb. If you listen to me, if you do your research and you follow the guidelines, you can be very successful um, doing Airbnb. So one of the first things you want to do, you want to find out what is your city ordinance. If you're in the Chicago area, I know Chicago, they make you um, pay for a permit. Um, you got to get approval. Um, and also Chicago is going to get, you know, some taxes out of you just to let you know. Um, so just to let you know about if you live in, in the um, city of Chicago. Now the surrounding suburbs, I don't think they have the same city ordinance, but you always want to research that just to make sure. All right, read and watch videos. So one of the things my wife and I have done, we have read videos, we have researched Airbnb, we have studied Airbnb and the methods and the strategies that we have come up with has worked so far. So we thank God for that there. Also, third, you want to study your local competition. Your competition pretty much is the hotels. Now, remind you, the hotel is a $560 billion industry, and they don't want nobody treading on their territory. So the one thing about it, the hotels, a lot of hotels are not Airbnb friendly. They have made their money over 100 years, and guess what? They feel that Airbnb is a threat to them. So that is your local competition, not necessarily the Airbnbs around you, because you can partner with Airbnbs around you if you got Perhaps people that want to stay and you, your space may be filled, well, you can recommend them to another Airbnb friend of yours that you know that's booking, um, that has Airbnb bookings as well, okay? As we move on, business startup costs. So I always champion everybody should have their own business. I don't care what nobody say that, well, everybody can't have a business, Andre. Well, I disagree 100%. And times like this is the perfect example. I always believe that everybody should have a business, even if it's a part-time business. So when we have economic downturns like we're having now, you'll have some extra income where you don't have to depend on the government or anybody to take care of you. So I am a firm believer of everybody having their own business. Also, because I like the tax breaks, I must admit, I like the tax tax breaks as a business owner. You, as a, a business owner, you get about 500 tax breaks. As an individual filing of taxes, you're going to get maybe about 5 to 10 um, tax breaks if you're lucky. All right, so make sure that you get a business license. How do you get a business license? Well, if you're in Illinois, you want to um, apply to get your Articles of Incorporation, which is about $175. It used to be about $500. Thank God that um, the last governor, he put up a fight um, and was able to get those um, fees reduced down to $175. And you want to start up your LLC, maybe get you an accountant that can help you through the process. So here's the website you go to to start up, um, to start up a business, to get a business license in Illinois at um, www.cyberdriveillinois.com. Okay. If you're in another state, you probably want to Google where you have to, where, where you have to go to get your business license. Also, you want to get your EIN number. Those are free. Um, well, no matter what state you're in, you can go to www.irs.gov and get you a free EIN number. I'm sorry, today. And then you want to get a local business license. I'm, I don't know why, but I always hear people say get a business license, but they never talk about getting a local business license. You want to make sure that you are able to operate within your community. So I know in my area, um, our business license is $50. So make sure that you get your business license, all right? Also, remember that you are in the hospitality business, meaning that you are there to be to provide great customer service and great customer service is your number one priority. So you want to make sure that your property is nice and clean. You want to make sure that you're ready when your guests get there because they're going to judge you on your cleanliness. My wife and I, we start um, normally on Monday. We know we got a booking on Friday and we're making sure that we're wiping everything down, that we're cleaning, that we're vacuuming, we're cleaning the bathrooms, making sure no hair is left over because, you know, women, they, they love 
that, you know, they had a hair weave and they doing their hair and, and braiding it and stuff like that. And one thing I have found that can destroy your business if you, if a, a guest come in and see and see hair everywhere. All right. You want to make sure that you have great customer service. Great customer service is the key to your success. That is one reason when I gave people their 100 percent refund back, I also made sure that I and let them know that if you book again with us, I will give you a discount on your uh, rental as well because I want to make sure that I retain my customers and to make sure every time they come back to the Chicago area, they know to make sure they to book with me and Melissa. All right. So remember that there, this is a hospitality business. All right. Now, let's get your home ready. Let's start prepping you. This is actually a picture of our home, our living room area. Um, as you can see, we make sure that it's nice and clean, nice and vacuumed, ceiling fans wiped down, and we're pretty much ready to go. And I'm going to get into a little bit of that prep now as we prepare you to get your Airbnb up and running during this economic downturn. All right. So one of the first things that my wife and I did, we called up Com Ed and we said, look, Com Ed, we want to get on your energy efficient program because we not only do we want to make money, we want to save money. So what Com Ed do? They came in and they changed out all the light bulbs in the house. They checked out our um, furnace. They checked out our water heaters. They looked at um, our AC unit. They looked in the attic to make sure that we are saving money on our electricity every month. So pretty much we went to from a $135 light bill to a $65 a month light bill on the average. So this service that Com, Com, well, we in Chicago, that Com Ed provides is a free service where they come out and change out your light bulbs and to make sure that you're saving money over time. So if you're in the Chicago area, definitely reach out to Com Ed to get your house um, energy, get the um, free home energy assessment done on your house, okay? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the, um, the technology part as far as your Airbnb as well, um, how to automate your home. That's going to be at a later um, at a, a later showing, uh, well, a later um, video that we, that I'm going to produce, put it like that. And then I think that would be very helpful for, for you guys as well. Also, make sure you organize your home. You want to make sure your house is not cluttered. You want to make sure that your house is looking good. Everything is nice and neat. And I, I'm going to tell you, it took probably me and my wife about three months to get the house the way we wanted to. Because we got to tossing out stuff, putting stuff in the garage, cleaning closets, and things like that. Because my wife, she's a perfectionist, and she wants to make sure everything is done right. That's 20 years. That's what 20 years in the military do for you people. All right. And also, you want to make sure that your house is ready. Ironically, it seemed like when we decided to do Airbnb, we had some issues. For one, our AC unit stopped working. Uh, so we had had somebody come out and take care of that. Um, our sub pump, we started having problems, problems with that. That started messing up. We had to have somebody come out with that, take care of that. We also had to have somebody come out to look at our um, chimney because when it started raining, our basement was flooding. So, but good thing we had insurance. Um, we pay $500 a year for insurance. So thank God that we had insurance that we um, was able to take care of that with no extra charge. The deductible is only $75. So that's the good thing about that there. So make sure that you have home insurance. And just to let you know, Airbnb do insure you up to $1 million. All right. So Airbnb will insure you up to $1 million um, for um, using that service. So if somebody come in your home, tear it up and things like that, your house is protected up to $1 million. You want to make sure that you have any police reports, any pictures, anything like that, just to make sure you get your money back, okay? All right. And then, and so that's what pretty much the, what we have here. And then, you are, like I said before, you want to make sure everything is vacuumed, make sure everything is cleaned, and you want to make sure that you can do any touch of paint around the house. Um, we had to do some touch of paint as well. Somebody, whoever, we had purchased our home about three years ago, some guy, this, whoever painted, decided to paint the handrails with a flat finish. So you know how dirty the handrails got with a flat finish paint on your handrails. Especially considering it's a high uh, traffic area. You need some paint that's durable. So me and my wife, we did some touch-up paint around the house. All right. So And also, you want to make sure that you got your technology up and running. Um, Wi-Fi is good. A lot of people, they look for Wi-Fi. We do give people access to our wash and dryer. You know, they may want to come in and wash. We do leave some... Uh, wash pads as well for them to wash their clothes and to use the dishwasher as well. So we make everything re um, available for our guests so they can be comfortable and feel like they're at home. So it's their home away from home. So and also you want to make sure make sure that you got a smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector up in your home. We have one on each level of the house and in, in each bedroom. 
Um, I always tell people as a housing inspector, I did housing inspections for over um, eight years. Make sure that you have your smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors up. I tell tenants that all the time. Carbon monoxide is a silent killer. It will kill you in your sleep. You can't smell it. You can't taste it or anything like that. And understanding fires, that fires, fires can spread within three seconds and destroy your entire home. And then most cities, I know our city don't recommend it, but some cities recommend that you have a fire extinguisher. Okay, so this is what I have for you today. Um, this is part one on preparing your house for Airbnb during the, um, during the coronavirus lockdown. I hope this was beneficial to you. I will be posting up video number two in a couple of days. And as always, as I close this show out, we thank God for his unmerited, undeserving favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy grace. You can't sell it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us. Because we believe that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and that he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of myself and my lovely wife, Melissa, be blessed. Have a good night.